everyone, you're watching News Epicenter with me, Maria Shakil. The deadly coronavirus has exposed chinks in our medical infrastructure armor. As multiple reports come in from all quarters of India, all villages and districts of India of oxygen shortage, of bed shortage, ICU uh, beds shortage, also of critical medicines, one resource that is becoming critical and it is also leading to unfortunate loss of lives is oxygen. Today, a very unfortunate incident took place, this time in Andhra Pradesh, when those who thought that their loved ones are safe, when because they have managed to get a hospital admission, were disappointed. They are anguished today because lives have been lost. The virus is deadly, but what is claiming lives as well is poor medical care. The shortage of beds, essential drugs, and namely oxygen. A slight disruption of oxygen in ICU wards is leading to deaths. And this is a story we are seeing too regularly. Today it was Tirupati, where the disruption of oxygen supply led to the deaths of 11 people at a government hospital because an oxygen tanker came in from Tamil Nadu few minutes late. 11 lives gone because a tanker was late. Let that sink in. 11 people managed to get admission in hospital but lost their lives because oxygen was not available. What happened in Tirupati is not an isolated incident. Just yesterday in neighboring Hyderabad, seven died at the King Koti Hospital, a special COVID facility due to a shortage of oxygen. A week ago in Karnataka, 24 people died due to the oxygen crisis, while on the 1st of May, the day the vaccine drive was supposed to get a mega boost, 12 died at Delhi's Batra Hospital, one of the biggest private hospitals in the country, because they did not have enough oxygen. This happened just days after 20 people died at the Jaipur Golden Hospital in the capital because of a similar shortage. The logistical problems of moving oxygen from point A to point B continue even as the center has rammed up oxygen production, even roping in the armed forces to boost the supply chain. But the human cost of fixing this problem is too high and no one is being spared, be it the rich or the poor, when all you need is better coordination between various state governments, between government at the center and the state, between nodal authorities and between different authorities. But this is a grim reality of a nation that sends life-saving vaccines to the globe, whose own citizens dread the virus and even the medical infrastructure. Let me bring in my guests now. T. Krishna Babu is a senior bureaucrat in the Andhra Pradesh government. Ravish Chavla lost his pregnant wife and unborn child to COVID-19. We are being joined by Dr. S.C.L. Gupta, medical director of Dr. Batra Hospital. Professor Dilip Mavlankar is director IIPHG. I'm going to begin with you, Mr. Krishna. There were SOS sent by this hospital. This is no ordinary hospital. This is a thousand bed hospital which caters to the need of patients and you know people in and around four districts. Tirupati, Madala, Nellor, Chittor. And still this incident happens. What can the state government say? Yeah, it is a very unfortunate incident. Uh, 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 the oxygen demand has risen abnormally high in the last two weeks. Almost 24th government of India has allocated around 490 metric tons. When the caseload is almost uh, half of the present uh, caseload, that is positives. So now uh, almost it has doubled. So we were uh, requesting for additional allocation and continuously trying for various sources uh, because entirely this is uh, being uh, uh, allocated by government of India. So naturally, we are trying our best to see what best we can get. Uh, so uh, just uh, uh, day for yesterday, 8th, uh, we got allocation of around 590, that is additional uh, some quantity. But only thing is the caseload has increased by the time for, uh, almost by 100%. So this is uh, uh, a very challenging task. We are trying our best, uh, the logistics, everything we are monitoring. 
by state war room as well as the district level war rooms. Unfortunately, uh, we had some problem with uh, uh, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Uh, Kerala uh, supply to Tamil Nadu is uh, uh, means things uh, threat means uh, party metric tons. Uh, the there was some disruption uh, based on which uh, Tamil Nadu wanted uh, us to uh, reduce our consumption. So this particular discussion was going on for the last three to uh, four days. And government of India has uh, told, uh, given around four days time for us uh, at least to solve this issue. But somehow, unfortunately, because of uh, uh, so many times, uh, uh, there Mr. is a disruption. Mr. Krishna, I just want to understand one thing. That yeah. why is everything an afterthought? Why is it that the governments in multiple states are realizing that there will be shortage of oxygen? Haven't we learned lessons from a multiple countries outside India and Delhi's experience. Of course, what is happening in Delhi, if it is not handled properly, will happen in other parts of India. Because if there is an oxygen crunch and oxygen is a critical resource in the second wave, then it will be required in hospitals, say in Andhra Pradesh, which is witnessing this kind of surge right now. So why are you so unprepared? So, uh, Madam, let us uh, just uh, see the figures because, see, we are prior to COVID, almost entire Andhra Pradesh, we were having only 3,636 uh, beds of oxygen, uh, including ICU, ventilators, everything. So, seeing the requirement of oxygen in the first phase, almost government has uh, enhanced it to almost 26,000, almost eight to nine times we have uh, increased the oxygen beds. Similarly, the ventilators, ICU beds, everything is almost made four times compared to the pre-COVID times. So we were not expecting this sudden uh, jump, almost starting at very low of around uh, less than uh, 200 positives per day to almost 22,000 positives per day in two weeks time. And oxygen, you know, the production, the carrying capacity, everything cannot be built overnight. The, even the carriers, oxygen carriers, are the best efforts government of India is making. So we were not able to produce any additional tankers except importing ISO containers in a smaller number. So naturally, you this... Know, uh, Mr. Krishna, yeah. this is a bureaucratic response. I wish you could give the same response to the relatives of 11 patients who lost their lives, unfortunately, because your government could not really foresee this, what was inevitable in many ways, and also the fact that in eight months, capacity augmentation has not happened. It played out in, doc in Batra Hospital as well. We are being joined by Dr. Gupta, and he was in tears when he lost patients, and these patients whose lives could have been saved. Dr. Ba Dr. Gupta, when you look back, what do you have to say? Why have are we so unprepared? I, have I mean, how can we continue to say that this could have been done, that could have been done, when nothing is being done? I have got a question from Mr. Krishna. The thing was predicted a year back. The second, was, second wave was also predicted. Number of patients amounting not exactly, but this was also predicted that this will be a just double and triple of first phase. And we everybody knew that the treatment of a COVID is only oxygen, drug and vaccination. So the first line of the treatment is an oxygen. Why the governments were not prepared? The first question. Why this oxygen was not produced in the hospital? Why the action was not taken initially that every hospital must have? Why we are taking action today that every hospital must have their oxygen plant? Why this was not thought six months back? We knew that second wave will be coming. Yes, uh, why? So as, you have, <clears throat> as you have already uh, seen whatever <laughs> figures, uh, so almost uh, every uh, infrastructure, hospital infrastructure, whether, whether ICU beds, ventilators, or oxygen bed, everything is almost made eight times to 10 times. So, but only issue is oxygen generation plants uh, cannot uh, come overnight. Almost we have uh, given sir, order. We, we, are, we, we are not talking of overnight, sir. We are talking about in six months, eight months of time. Yes, uh, see, huh, we, why, we why, have, why, why the government hasn't thought of it? 
no government has now now now, now 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 everybody is thinking at the cost of how many lives 11 lives in your andhra pradesh 12 lives plus 25 plus 20 lives in delhi and so many lives which is not even calculated is not even informed because of a lack of oxygen you are also aware yeah. of the COVID yeah. situation, yeah. even though yeah. orders are given, getting started <clears throat> and uh, erecting the plants is becoming a challenge. So even though we upscaled the infrastructure on many fronts, uh, maybe the uh, second wave has uh, definitely uh, crossed our expectation and uh, definitely... Uh, eight months is a long time, sir. Eight months is a long time. And uh, how unfortunate are these lives? that they managed to get a hospital bed when there are countless who are waiting to get that hospital admission. What, what they the lost their lives wants? on the doorsteps what, of hospitals. What hospital yes. wants? A continuous yes. supply so, of oxygen for treating their yes. patients. Uninterrupted supply of the oxygen. Hmm. So now almost... Timely supply the, of the oxygen. Yeah. No, we, we understand this hmm. is a... Uh, issue definitely very serious issue uh, lives are involved that is why our honorable chief minister has given almost sanctions uh, uh, on all friends but only thing is uh, most of them have to be imported there are uh, issues and uh, erection is erection issues are there whatever we can already upscale we have and already everything uh, looks like up. an afterthought the compensation is an afterthought. Everything has to be in the form of a compensation. Why not make efforts to save lives? I'm going to bring Ravish Chavla here. Uh, Ravish, uh, I don't know what to say except this. How is your son? How is Vian doing? He's three and a half years old. And look at what is happening in different parts of India. My son Vian does not know what has happened to his life. He is totally unaware. I'm, he's too young to understand what Enormity, enormity. enormity has happened to him. Uh, so whenever he sees our group photo, so uh, somehow he knows something at the back of his mind that whenever uh, somebody tells her mama's name, so people start to cry. So she has totally stopped asking her mama's name. So a uh, child as young as three and a half year old. So he, he'll look at our uh, family photo. He'll say papa, mama, and then he'll you know just start looking at her uh, mama's face and would not utter a word. So. I know what has happened to him. He does not does not say he was. I can't have words. So she left us while being pregnant due to COVID. Yes, and so, yes, yes. I we are playing that footage of your wife. Um, that was perhaps her last message where she warned everybody: be careful. This is going to strike one and all. That these are not statistics anymore. That these are people we know. And people who we saw among us just few weeks ago. True. So she wanted to give out Ramesh. a message. Yes, she, so she wanted to give out a message. She actually had made this video while she was uh, COVID positive. She had made it on 17th of April. She passed out on uh, 26th. Uh, she had made it for her friends and family unknowingly that she would not be there in this world. And her message would actually reach out to the world, reach out to the people, and I'm sure uh, people are listening to her message, and I'm sh she'd, be, she'd be happy up there if even one family pays heed to her message and, you know, some lives are saved, so they do take precautions. That is what she wanted. She herself was a doctor. She was a public health uh, dentist. So she had in her, she had in it to, you know, disseminate uh, health information to public. So she had made her, made it, video of what she is feeling and what people can do you know warning people you know if you know you think you are immune but there are elderly, elderly people at your home there are pregnant women at your home you should care about them and this second wave of covid has actually uh, struck the younger population more uh, i was just reading uh, between 31 to 40 so my wife was 34 unfortunately uh, while being pregnant, uh, she herself used to take Andrew, a lot of. Uh, when when you hear yes. stories such as what happened in Doctor, you know, Doc, uh, Batra Hospital in Delhi, or what happened in that hospital in Andhra Pradesh, there are several stories such as this that is coming in of patients dying inside hospital because of oxygen uh, disruption and the supply got disrupted because the tankers came late. How unfortunate! Right. Yes, yeah, that is. So unfortunate. Uh, I mean, 
people should get oxygen i mean if they get uh, you know that is one of their need i mean oxygen is one basic thing people go to hospital to you know have medication and get uh, you know get themselves ready uh, for this actually oxygen is the, the last thing uh, you know earlier that people would used to think that oxygen can run out so but the enormity of covid the severity of covid uh, how it has spread like wildfire i think no one imagined and uh, somehow things have to be in place for them i i hope you get strength to deal with this enormous loss in your life vijay pushpa is also joining us uh, he had problem with finding oxygen bed in vijayawada go ahead tell us your story we have uh, government of andhra pradesh representatives on the show yeah the issue is i had a very uh, uh, novel experience i live in basically chennai and then my parents are in uh, vijayawada since i've gone through a month back i had an experience of handling covid myself then four of them fell sick there in vijayawada so luckily we had a five bedroom house the issue was uh, father is 72 mom 70 and my sister was into her uh, late 30s and uh, when we go out uh, there is uh, basically crowd is there but the crowd management by the hospitals are quite uh, irregular and i can also say i've been to many three to four big hospitals which i don't wish to name the hospitals are in a fear to accept the covid patients especially who are uh, 70 plus or who saturation is or who are likely to pass away with a fear that they may not be paid the, the hospital fees and their efforts etc so what these hospitals are doing is when i went and asked beds for my uh, parents and for my sister they are saying you see we don't have beds but we can help you there is an agent there is a person probably keep in touch with him and he has a list of hospitals whenever the beds get vacant uh, you know this man will be able to help you see i'm i'm okay with somebody charging me a professional fees and all those things but all the uh, uh, i do, i i want to tell i'm a practicing lawyer at madras high court i want to tell these hospitals don't worry if somebody blames you of anything or accusing it's an act of god pandemic everybody will understand deaths and issues you may have to face one or two difficult patients and their the family members like what happened in apollo and all those things but uh, Uh, don't have agencies and don't create layers in between and don't send away i also had yes. an experience yes. they reserved Th- 5% that certainly is a very very yes unfortunate part of these middlemen being generated as well let me go back to uh, the the topic of discussion today um, after i've heard two experiences of two uh, families uh, professor dilip mavlankar the cr- critical resource of oxygen reports coming in what happened in batra hospital was not an isolated incident similar reports coming in from multiple states today it was andhra pradesh yeah. uh, i think uh, these are all uh, symptoms of underlying disease which is that we don't have much health planning in the country and we don't understand and employ professional managers to manage our health systems doctors who are very senior very respected very experienced they manage or the is officers manage or the state level bureaucrats manage now logistics and supply management has become a very uh, evolved field over last 40 50 years in management simple idea of a buffer stock or a strategic reserve of certain things which are very vital if you look at the stores management there is a something called ved system vital essential and desirable and oxygen comes in vital you can't live without oxygen with 3 minutes time to death so it has to have nationally oxygen reserves of course this was unprecedented uh, we never thought it would go up which also shows the failure of our epidemic intelligence system the epidemics don't rise immediately we have almost a month's time it is uh, exponential rise but it started rising in the early part of Ma- march in many parts in maharashtra yes. it was even rising before that so we should have alerted the only wise hmm. state was kerala which doubled its oxygen capacity hmm. in september after the first wave and that's why kerala uh, is able to export oxygen now even today they have stopped exporting okay that that But exactly brings me let, let me go back to uh, uh, mr krishna and let's have dr gupta and mr krishna on the screen now um, 
here is a Kerala model that is being talked about by Professor Mablankar. If Kerala could do it, why couldn't Andhra Pradesh? Why couldn't you ramp up your yeah. own yeah. oxygen yeah. plants and concentrators to ensure that there is uninterrupted supply, sir? Uh, just pre, uh, just in the first phase of COVID, uh, we uh, maximum consumed around 200 metric tons on a peak day, that is September 3rd last year. So uh, prior to that itself, we started ramping up our uh, oxygen storage. Now we have almost 580 tons of uh, storage facility across the state. But uh, now uh, it, this is unprecedented and we are now supplying around 600 metric tons of oxygen, but still it is not sufficient and almost it is a hand to mouth existence where any uh, three hours or eight hours of breakdown of any vehicle or stopping of this vehicle is creating uh, uh, the problem in the hospital which is which is intended to fill up so even though we could uh, increase uh, exponentially but that is not uh, sufficient and, and the oxygen How production convinced are you dr gupta that no matter what the level of preparation given the nature of this tsunami nobody could have been prepared are you certainly, convinced with this argument certainly not dr gupta if kerala can do why andhra cannot do why delhi cannot do See, think uh, about the patients. They, they, this is all happening in the tertiary care center, super specialty center, 1,000 bedded hospital, 500, 600 bedded hospital. See, see the psychology of the patient is, if you go to a primary health center or makeshift hospital or a small nursing home, a small hospital, he goes to a bigger hospital, he feels confident. Yes, I'm here, I know. I will be in the safe hands. I will be safe. And there in these hospitals, somebody is dying because of lack of oxygen. Basic, basic thing. One of the corona warriors who has saved thousands of lives in the last one year. Yes. And he, we could not save him mm. because of an oxygen. And you are saying this is unprecedented. I'm sorry. If Kerala can do, we can do, then why not Andhra and Delhi? This is simple, simpler planning. We know the requirement. We know the requirement yes. that this will be the about requirements in Delhi. And we don't have a single uh, kilogram of the uh, production of oxygen in Delhi. I don't know about the Andhra, how much they are yes. producing. Huh? Second thing is, Suppose yes. there is a... Mr. Krishna, SOS. I'll give you 30 Sub seconds huh. and I'm going to go huh. go back to Dr. Gupta for, for the final words. Yes, Mr. Krishna, quickly, I am I asked that question and same question was raised by Dr. Gupta. I'm just saying, can you give assurance to the people of your state that what happened today will not be repeated? That you will ensure yes. uninterrupted supply of oxygen in all hospitals across? Yeah, we have already uh, taken a uh, lot of initiatives and uh, of course it is a very unfortunate incident because of whatever uh, some tussle going on with uh, Tamil Nadu supply uh, here. Uh, but I can assure you that uh, with the state government, Honorable Chief Minister giving trust on this, uh, sanction hundreds of crores, almost we have spent 2000 crores in the first uh, wave of COVID for improving the infrastructure of uh, medical infrastructure and also uh, the expenditure this wave almost we has already we have already given another, okay. another 2000 crores of uh, uh, funds for uh, improving the infrastructure but uh, uh, definitely we'll uh, try I, our best i was best. hoping that you will reply as of today what have you done in terms of ensuring that the transportation is smooth in terms of assuring uh, you know assuring the people of your state as to how you would increase the capacity final words to you dr batra it's heartbreaking to see that, you know, many people we know struggle to get beds, struggle to get proper medical care. But those who thought that they are perhaps fortunate that they managed to get a bed die inside hospitals. What does it speak about our medical infrastructure? I think, I mean, uh, SOS calls, what uh, Mr. Krishna was saying. SOS calls means that within half an hour, near vicinity you must get the oxygen but here what happened even in the so after sos calls you're not getting the oxygen this is simply lack of management i think uh, by your medium i request 
that all governments, all officers, they must realize by now that yes, what has happened, this is wrong. And they must work together today to save the life of these corona patients by providing enough oxygen, by providing enough drugs, by providing vaccination to everybody. Yes. I mean, they must learn with these experiences. You know, this is the time to provide each and every person their basic right, right to live in the form of a drug, in the form of oxygen, in the form of vaccination. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. This is about right to <clears throat> life, which is under threat visibly in multiple states across the country because of lack of preparation and planning. If there is a model, clearly, why couldn't that have been replicated? If other states are suffering, why couldn't other states, which are obviously lagging behind in terms of the surge, prepare better? Better. I would like to thank all the panelists for joining me on this discussion. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you tomorrow.